So, with more and more people uh, turning to the garden for a little bit of respite from all of this, let's get to Mick on, uh, Mick Poltney from Colligate Gardening Club. Uh, good afternoon to you, Mick. I do, Caroline. How do? Nice to talk to you, Mick. So, have you been out uh, and you finished with your compost now, have you? Yeah, I'm composting this morning. Always right. on a Monday for me. So more and more people are getting out and having a go at this then, uh, you know, with, 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 you know, varying degrees of success, I might say, in my situation. What should we be doing at this type of time of year, Mick? Well, if you've got a small garden or, well, you don't even need a garden. I mean, even if you live in a lighthouse, get a window box. <laughs> Growing containers would just get your brain occupied, fresh air. Yeah. Obviously, if you live in a block of flats, you're in the quagmire. I pity them a lot. But there's loads you can do. Uh, Wilco are still flogging the garlic, onion scents, shallots, uh, seed taters. Right. Get seeds as well, uh, leek seed, loads of uh, salad stuff you can get. But you just need, um, well, you need obviously a bag of multi purpose compost. Yeah. Well, my growing medium, I mix it with uh, vermiculite as well, which will go flog, flog again. Right. But the vermiculite hangs on to moisture, warmth and oxygen, which is what your roots want. Right. So if you mix that with your compost as well. But just grow, if you ain't got a, a garden, just grow in containers, you know, a large bag or a large tub. Yeah. Anything like that. Well, it's, it's a question really, Mick, isn't it, of nothing ventured, nothing gained? Because if people haven't tried this before and they want to give it a whirl... Then Anybody they might, can do it. Yeah, they, they, they could have some great success. There, there are probably things that, that aren't going to grow, but at least you've tried. Yeah. I mean, you don't even need a greenhouse nowadays. You know, if you've got a, a sunny porch or anything like that, obviously you've got to get permission off the missus. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you, you can grow carrots 12 months of the year. With them, I, I used to go up to our local florist up Collegate, and the, the 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 buckets they use, the florist buckets, they either bin them or return them, and I've, I've, I must have had about two hundred of them bin out. Right. That's for the when I did the school gardening club, Caslon. I had loads for them, and the with two uh, disabled plots, I had loads for them and all. But basically, it's multi-purpose compost. Which we, you ain't got to use for me, Clyde, but I do. And uh, about half inch from the top of the pot, then bang it down slightly. That hardens it. You know, you don't push yeah. it down with your hands, nothing. And then just uh, normal carrot seed from Wilco, so thinly on the top, and then just cover it with a fine covering of vermiculite, then water it. Now, and you can grow these in a cold greenhouse. Right, OK, then. So anybody can have a go. Now, people seem to be going out and tending to their lawns a bit at the minute. So what should we be doing at this time of the year? Because I was mentioning earlier, uh, I noticed my neighbour going over his with a fork, so I thought I'd give it a whirl. The fork snapped, so that didn't take too long, to be fair. Somebody says that they're airing the lawn. But if your grass is all a bit yellow, you know, it's had its first cut and underneath it's all a bit yellow and, frankly, looks a bit dead, what can you do to spruce it up a bit? Well, I'd run uh, trading sheds on our allotment site as well. And uh, what one of the good sellers now is uh, spring and summer, which is a lawn feed. Right. Because uh, most things you've got to feed. It's, it's, I just treat every plant like a human being. You know, you don't give them too much feed. Otherwise, they go weak and then you get disease and that. And uh, you've got to water, obviously. But lawns, I mean, our kids used to use it when they was younger as a football pitch. Yeah, yeah. But now they've, well, once come back home again. But now you don't get the use. There ain't much I have to do to it. I only give it a two feeds during the growing season. I mean, if you have got moss, I also sell, which you don't get from Wilco, well, most places, weed and feed with moss killer. But obviously anything like this, you've, you've got to, if, it, if there's no rain forecast, then you've got to water it after you've put it down. Yeah. Maybe that's where I went wrong then, to be fair, mm. because mine all died, so that wasn't good. And how do you get, because I've got sort of like honeysuckles, jasmines and all that in the garden, they never smell. How do you get them to smell? <laughs> <laughs> well, they, don't, they, they, they don't smell of anything. They're all growing. I've, I've got them to grow, which is miraculous, to be fair. You feed them and all. You've got uh, to feed them. What with? Tomato feed, anything like that. I potash. Right, okay. So Maxi some... crops are good, and 
general purpose maxi crop. So if I feed it, it'll smell nice? Well, it'll give you a return. Right. Look after them, they'll look after you. OK, so I need to get out there, talk to it, give it a bit of water, feed it a little bit, and hopefully I can turn this around yeah. and uh, make them smell very nice indeed. Bit of, bit of luck we're going to get a summer. We ain't just had it. Well, no, don't... Yeah, because that, that's it. When we get lovely weather at this time of the year, that's that's generally all there is to it, isn't it? And it's down no, here all the put, way. Any road out of summer. <laughs> well, that listen, weather. you've given us some good tips, Mick. And uh, so are many people in your gardening club? Uh, it's about 140 members. But that's what usually the trading sheds as well. Yeah. But the ones that come to the meetings, say, 40, 50, 60 on a good night. But we have a, a big show in Wilson Hall, second Saturday in September. Right. Hopefully. Yeah, fingers but, uh, crossed. We fill that place out. But that's a proper old hall where you, you know, so you, with a big stage as well. And we can get odds in there. Well, hopefully after all the... that's still on. Yes, well, hopefully, hopefully, we'll, A, it will be still on. And after all of this, people will have a new appreciation and uh, a new keenness for getting out into the garden and you'll get some new members. But, Mick, lovely talking to you. Thank you very much. I will try feeding my plants. All right. Yeah, I've got a few more tips written down if you want them. Oh, go on then. While you're on, off you go. Right, when you're potting on tomatoes, cucumbers, green, any brassicas, peppers, sweet corn, there's loads of stuff like that. Right. When you're potting on... Uh, pot on up to the first leaf, meaning that stem you've buried, that will throw out extra roots, right. giving you a stronger and healthier plant. I start everything off in plastic drinking cups in the greenhouse. Right. I, n I never plant anything outside straight in the plot, because if I get a miss, then I've got a gap. Yeah. So I start everything off at home. Uh, with a sponge, I planted two out yesterday on the allotment. Well, I started them off in pots, meaning if you get a, um, like Wilco, they've still got them, I mean, I saw them last week. If you get a uh, seed potato, mm. just start off in a little pot first, five, six inch pot. Of course, big centimetre, I'm English. But fill that up with compost, put your spud in, water it, frost free, obviously cold greenhouse, and then it will, after a couple of weeks, it show signs. Right. And I potted to out yesterday. On my allotment, I'm all raised beds. Yeah. I've been for 20 odd year. I ain't dug for 20 odd year. That's why worms were invented. Right. So they do my digging. <laughs> if you raise beds four foot wide, you can reach the middle from either side. Yeah. Meaning you never tread on it. You only dig because you've compacted the soil. Yeah. I ain't dug for 20 odd year. With spuds, I've found out because I've got a good growing medium in my raised beds anyway. Yeah. When you plant your spud and they're coming through, or might are through anyway, we should put a spud in and it comes up. You earth up in case you get a frost. Right. Now, mine are established in the pot, so they, we get forecast a little frost tonight, so it might job the tops a bit, but it, it will not harm the plant. It'll only knock it back a day or two. Right. People earth up when the spuds started coming through, that earth, that soil, you've nicked it from the soil. You've mm. nicked it from the growing medium. Mm. If you leave it there and earth up with straw, which I do, then you've got more room for spuds to grow in. Yeah. If you nick it and earth up, you've nicked the soil. You'll get mm. less taters. And the first sign when I have a look at my spuds is when the flowers come on. Once you see a flower, I take the growing medium away and have a look how the spuds are doing. Right. This, when we with the um, garden club up, the kids with the school, I used to give them a big pot each, 12-inch pot, give them a seed tater, you have to bunk it in the pot, and then they put their name on a label. I says, right, you look after that. If it dies, that's your fault. And they <laughs> looked after it, because they got a job. Now that spud, once it gets roots in it, they can upend it, and the roots will stop the... Um, you know, the uh, compost collapsing. Yeah. You know, every week we used to check them and they used to take the spuds off that was big enough to eat, put it back in the pot, water and feed it. Every plant has got to survive, mm. i.e. throw young. So if it's the same as everything, all fruit and veg. If it's there, pick it. Mm. Pick the bloody lot. The plant's got to survive, so it's got to throw more. 
So with a spud, it will carry on growing all through the growing season. Right. Because he's, he's throwing littlings. Yeah. So that's what I do now. And I've gone from a full plot, which is 26 foot long by 4 foot, down to a quarter of a plot, just from his spuds, because I don't lift them. Right. All I do is take away the soil. As soon as some spuds are big enough, I take them spuds off carefully. And you can see the rest of the small spuds on there. I earth up again with growing medium. Basically, I'm not killing the plant. Yeah. Like, if you think, oh, the spuds are ready, I'll, I'll take them up. But you've, you've knackered the plant up. Because all them little small taters, you, you've lost them. If you just take them off what's ready, earth up again, he'll carry on growing. Just feed and water him. Well, I'll tell you what, Mick, uh, that is very helpful. We know how to do taters. I think that we'll get you back on again, if that's all right, and have another update in another week or so. So we'll go back to Mick. See, now we've got our own gardening expert. That's a cheery thing. Thank you, Mick Poltney from uh, Colligate Gardening Club. So I need to get some of this tomato feed from somewhere, and hopefully my lovely (laughs) plants will smell fragrant. I'll give it away. Do you know what? I'm going to give this...